In the middle of the 14th century AD, the Black Death swept across Eurasia and killed perhaps 200 million people, changing the course of history. But this was not the first time this disease had struck humanity. A new study has suggested that 5,000 years ago, Neolithic Europe was brought to its knees by a plague that allowed the Western steppe herders to migrate almost unopposed into emptied lands, bringing about the transition to the Bronze Age. I'm Dan Davis, I'm a novelist, and on this channel I talk about the real history behind my fictional stories. And this is the story of the first Great Plague. The medieval Black Death was caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, which was endemic in rodents in the east and was brought west along trade routes into the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. The European people had no resistance to this new pathogen and it was so astonishingly, bafflingly deadly that in some places the mortality rate was 50%. No other plague has come close to that. Sometimes whole families were wiped out, whole villages even. The handful of survivors drifting away, leaving empty houses that would never be reoccupied. Many people found themselves completely alone in the world, all their loved ones gone in just a few days. It's difficult for us to even imagine it. The Black Death resulted in enormous social changes. It's been linked to the end of serfdom and the beginning of the rise of the commoner that led ultimately to the modern world. So it's got a lot to answer for. After the initial plague, there were many more plagues through later centuries, some more deadly than others, some more localised than others. Some plagues affected children more, others older people, and so on. Gradually, it became less deadly. Populations built up resistance, hygiene improved, and possibly other diseases took its place in the pathogenic ecology. Now. The Black Death was not actually the first historically recorded plague. This was in fact the terrible Plague of Justinian, which was between AD 541 to 549, and that one persisted until the 8th century AD. We don't know quite how bad it was, but it might have killed something like 20% of the people in the uh, Roman Empire as it was then, killing thousands a day in Constantinople alone. And we know that this is the same disease as the Black Death in medieval Europe because a few years ago, researchers dug up bodies from both periods and extracted the genetic material of Yersinia pestis. And now, new studies have shown that Yersinia pestis was in fact present in Europe thousands of years earlier. The most ancient case of plague in humans was found in the body of a young woman from the Funnelbeaker culture who died in about 3000 BC in Sweden. Be sure to watch my video on the Funnelbeaker culture if you haven't already. This young woman's remains were in a passage grave in Sweden, so the researchers tested the other remains in that grave and found Yersinia pestis in one other person's remains, which dated from the same period. The researchers also tested remains of the pitted ware hunter-gatherers from that same region. I've got a video on the pitted ware people too, they're a fascinating people. Anyway, they found no plague in these contemporary nearby hunter-gatherers. The researchers reckon that the plague was spreading within the settled farmer communities, but not in the groups that had a lower population density. By performing various genetic analyses of these ancient samples, the researchers concluded that there was a large-scale branching and geographic spreading of Yersinia pestis between about 4000 BC and 3000 BC. Now this is during what has been termed the Neolithic decline and this is shortly before the massive migrations from the steppe into Europe. Significantly though, this paper points out that the spread of the disease was not linked to any migrations. Mass movements of people did not spread the disease. The disease came first and the migrations happened after. In fact, they date the location and timing of the disease to the decline of the Cucatani Trapilia culture. As I said in my video about this really amazing Eastern European civilization, they built the largest settlements in human history up to that point. The fall of this civilization has been linked to all kinds of events like climate change, invasion, political instability, and ecological collapse. And we know that stressed populations in high density communities are the ideal conditions for plague epidemics and pandemics, just like with the medieval Black Death. Now, look, I'm very sorry about this, but we need to talk a bit about how it kills people, just for a minute. 
There were three ways that you could get it. Famously, there's the bubonic plague. This disease attacks your lymph nodes and gives you all the signs of a massive infection. High fever, painful, aching joints, nausea and vomiting and just feeling pretty bloody ill basically. And this is the one that produces those large, disgusting black lumps around the lymph nodes in the armpits, neck and groin that were filled with revolting foul pus and infected blood. These could grow as big as an egg, as big as an apple, actually. By the end, people would be vomiting blood. If you got the bubonic plague, there was an 80% chance of death. You would probably suffer like this for between two and seven days. And that is the mildest form of the disease. The next worse is the pneumonic plague. This is when the disease infects the lungs. It starts with coughing up blood and within two or three days the blood just pours from the mouth until you die. It had a mortality rate of 90 to 95%. And the worst one of all, or maybe the best one actually, depending on how you look at it, is the septicemic plague. That's when the blood gets infected with Yersinia pestis. I'm sure we're all familiar with septicemia. There are accounts from the Black Death of people going to bed healthy one night and their husband or wife rolling over in the morning to find them stone dead, their flesh head to toe entirely black and necrotic. It could be that fast. Mortality rate was basically 100%. One of my novels, Vampire Night, takes place during the Black Death. Anyway, so remember all that while we go back to the Neolithic, and it was only when Yersinia pestis found itself in densely populated, possibly unhealthy proto-cities that it turned into a plague and then spread through Europe all the way to Sweden and possibly beyond. Because was it perhaps also responsible for the massive collapse in population that I mentioned in my Neolithic Britain video? They don't suggest that in this paper and so far, as far as I know, there's no evidence of the plague found in Britain from this date. And it would have had to have crossed from the Cucatoni to the Funnel Beakers to the Britons very quickly. But the dates do potentially match if we allow for margins of error. But hold on a moment. If the bacteria spread because of high population density and a stressed population, then why did it spread through Eastern Europe into Northern Europe at all? Because the Funnel Beaker people didn't live in enormous proto-cities, they lived in small villages and family farmsteads, very small villages. Well, the researchers suggest that the disease might have been spread at ceremonial gathering places like causewayed enclosures, and I discussed them in my Neolithic Britain video. So the idea is that the disease exploded in the urban centres of the Cucatani Trapilia culture and spread through the neighbouring Globula and Fora culture and into the Funnel Beaker culture and maybe beyond. I mentioned in my video on the stone battle axe that the Funnel Beaker people were trading with the cultures on the Dnieper and so we know that they had trade links across Europe which would have enabled this spread. But there's another problem isn't there? We know that diseases can and do become more and less deadly over time. So just because Yersinia pestis was found in these bodies it doesn't mean it caused some kind of horrific disease like the Black Death, like the bubonic plague liquefying people in just a few days or even a few hours. Well, this paper addresses that too. They reckon that finding Yersinia pestis DNA in human teeth is a strong sign that it was, in fact, deadly. And the genes of these strains also suggest that it was the pneumonic plague, the one that infected the lungs with a mortality rate over 90%. There's another piece of evidence that I didn't talk about yet, and I didn't talk about it much in my Cucatani Trapilia video either, but the Cucatani Trapilia people really liked periodically burning down their own houses. This is actually a quite a famous aspect of their civilization, and in fact it was this practice that led to a lot of the material culture being preserved in their remains. The Cucatani Trapilia houses were timber, but the floor and walls were covered with clay. The excavations of their cities reveal these thick clay deposits, so it's great for keeping their artefacts in great condition. But it actually made burning the houses difficult, and from experimental archaeology we know that they had to add a lot of extra fuel around the houses to get them to burn down. So it definitely wasn't accidental. It took a lot of effort to burn these homes to the ground, which they did about every 60 years or so before rebuilding a new home on top or nearby. The question has long been, but why? Of course there is the ritual explanation, 
you know, they say it's something to do with their cycles of life and death, and they're ritually killing the house every three generations or something like that. And there are more mundane explanations, like the houses just get too old to keep repairing, and so they have to start again. Prehistoric houses are often demolished when they get too old. However, burning is very specific, isn't it? They could just tear them down, but they don't, they burn them. And from the start, archaeologists have proposed that they were burned down to get rid of disease. Even before plague was suspected, the archaeologists suggested that it was some kind of pest control or disease control response, due in part to the density of the population. All things considered, I think the weight of evidence suggests that plague was a serious problem for the Kikutani Trapilia people at the very least. And this perhaps helps to explain why these massive cities were abandoned after a few centuries. Maybe the Kukutani Tripilia would have become a great, enduring, urban civilization. The Funnel Beaker culture also had a period of decline that led to the expansion of the Pitted Ware culture. We don't know exactly what caused this decline. It's always climate change or over farming, but perhaps the introduction of plague had a drastic impact in Northern Europe too. So is that wider narrative true then? Did the plague cause the Neolithic decline in Europe? paving the way for the steppe herders to move in and take it over. Well, we should be careful when assigning causes to prehistoric events, shouldn't we? You see this kind of thing in the historiography of the later Bronze Age collapse, where, notoriously, different generations of scholars assign the cause that happens to reflect their own times. So in the early 20th century, you might see uh, massive warfare and invasions emphasised. And in the Cold War, they started describing the late Bronze Age as a time of powerful expansionist superstates holding one another in check before the inherent weaknesses of the economic systems collapsed inward. And from the 70s, you see them talking about climate change. And after the internet era, they talk about networks and globalisation. You get what I'm saying? Our analyses of these kinds of events often says as much about us as it does about prehistory. That's not to say any of those interpretations are wrong, by the way. They're probably all correct. Reality is so complicated and cause and effect is so hard to work out that really you can use the evidence to construct almost any narrative you like without it ever being wrong. There are many other variables that contributed to the Neolithic decline and the coming of the Bronze Age. The over-exploitation of resources, climate change or some sort of inherent cultural degeneration and technological developments coming from the south and the east like an abundance of copper tools and weapons or wagons and horse riding, maybe. I considered including this Neolithic period plague in my Gods of Bronze series to explain the steppe herder migrations. But in the end I went with devastation caused by a race of giant immortals from the Paleolithic. It's a fantasy series so I can do that if I want to. But in the real world we know that there wasn't some complete depopulation that led to an empty landmass. And to be clear that isn't what this paper suggests at all. It has highly respectable archaeologist co-authors like Christian Christensen and we know there was no mass depopulation because although the male lineages of Neolithic Europe mostly ended, the lineages of Neolithic European women continued. That surely speaks to the patriarchal step herder influence more than anything, like I talk about in the Corios videos. Unless of course this late Neolithic variant of the plague killed way more men than women, which is a possibility, I suppose. It's accurate to say, I think, that the Neolithic decline likely had a number of causes, but one of them was surely the spread of the pneumonic plague. That wasn't the end of prehistoric plagues either. Yersinia pestis has been found in Bronze Age sites right across Eurasia in later Indo-European cultures, like the Corded Ware in the Eastern Baltic, the Unatika culture in Central Europe, and the Sintashta, Andronovo, and Afanantievo cultures on the other side of the steppe. Just how much of an impact this disease had on those Bronze Age cultures is difficult to say right now. But it's clear that this horrible little bacterium has been changing the course of human history since the very start of European civilization. Thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. Please help me out by clicking like. Make sure you watch my playlists on the various peoples of the Neolithic and the Bronze Age. If you made it this far, then you'll like them too. Thank you for watching.